why we can't breathe. The demands and voices of protest are raised across America. Voices of men and women, of children even. Voices of rage. Voices of hope. Voices of deep mass discontent. These voices, as anguished as they are insistent, are voices of a generation that has been largely silent in the public square. Only through their poets and rappers have their voices been heard. But even then, commercial interest intruded, changing righteous rage into clever rhymes. Art, not imitating life, but sending it down a street it had not intended. Now, an awful truth emerges. Out of the sweet mouths of the youth, we can't breathe, they shout. The we is instructive, for it reveals the collective consciousness emerging. We can't breathe. Why not? Because in the richest country on earth, poverty pitches pennies on the street corner, hoping against hope to hit. Because a simple education is beyond the ability of the neoliberal state to provide. Because today's school is tomorrow's prison and a place where hatred and humiliation lives, not knowledge, not education under the ridiculous rubric of no child left behind. Because for too many children, childhood is but an illusion, as it was for Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old boy, doing what boys have been doing for over a century, playing with a toy gun, becomes a death sentence. Because every hand and every face is turned against them, as futures are as bleak as lunar landscapes, we can't breathe, they howl, but we can't hear them. The neoliberal state is too busy choking them to death. From imprisoned nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Oh yeah, black sun in the hizzle, oh, but shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today, but first I want to say the views and opinions of that of Comcast are not to reflect the staff, Comcast staff, affiliates, or associates. With that being said, your discretion is advised. And with that being said, the views and opinions of Black Sun does not affect that of the arena. We are a council. If you don't want to know what a council is, you're going to have to watch this show and find out and see. All right. So with that being said, we're just going to do a year-end review today. We're going to talk about Eric Garner, Mike Brown. We're going to talk about the Ebola virus. We're going to might, might slip in a little uh, conflict with uh, Palestine and uh, might talk about Chesney if we get to it. You know, might talk about who? Chesney. Yes. Yeah. Well, what was, like, you know, what was the little, 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 little year in review? Oh, yeah, a little okay. review. Yeah. yeah, some of our most controversial souls. So, with that being <laughs> said, let me introduce the person to my right. How you doing, Tim? Well, good. I'm doing good. I mean, it's been a while, but I thank I you for having me on the show. You know, finally, it, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Good. Well, we want to see more of you in 2015. Oh, okay, <laughs> then you know, just continue to invite me on the show, and I, I'll come. All right. You know. All right. <laughs> you know y'all heard it first. Right there. To oh me. yeah, you know it. I be your brother, your servant, Gidon Ben Yasharal. I'm honored to be amongst the youth for tomorrow. Thank you for allowing me on the show. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening, man? Just, man, you know, give praise to the most high, creator of heaven and earth, everything in between. Just good to be here. You know what I'm saying? Good to okay. be back. Excited about the show. Excited about 2015. Good to see Tiff again. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got a locked in on commitment. Great to be on here with Gideon. So I'm just, just amped up. I wanted to ask you, what is the disclaimer wrote on the paper or something? I noticed you. No, were this is a musical guest for Gideon's show. Oh, it's, okay. uh, it's a group oh, called. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was a, a, a group called uh, Cadillac something or K. Uncle's Cadillac. Uncle's Cadillac. Kate man. Drizzle and okay. Starlight. Yeah, man. Okay. And their beautiful daughter. Yeah. Excellent program. Okay. And they okay. did what most musicians did when it caught in a bind, they had to go a cappella, and they did good. And did they, they did good? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. One thing I'm going to say about Gideon's show, Gideon will launch some you know some beginning talent so a lot of times when they blow up you need to be a hey remember where, where y'all got your start from and there you go that right yeah <laughs> that's absolutely. right yeah put a mic up just a little bit to you how we doing you know i usually yeah. lean into no, just, it just, 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 uh, okay yeah. i mean yeah yeah just yeah. get comfortable okay so yeah, you know we're in review i mean we still at the hills of i mean I, i'm seeing more 
I can't breathe t-shirts, you know what I'm saying? I want to pour my own I can't breathe, you know, because I'm from Cali. Uh -huh. You know, in California, we don't do the cigarette smoke, no offense, Yang, yeah. in the clubs. Yeah. So I was thinking, uh, uh, how about a big old, I can't breathe in the back, no smoking. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying, man, you know, it don't make no sense to me. Yeah, yeah, I like right. to go in the club and I'm dancing, I'm breathing hard, right. and I'm breathing hard with cigarette smoke. Yeah. Then they right. got the, I mean, it don't make no sense, Georgia. Yeah. I've been to the club sense. so long. They, so they still allow people to smoke in the club? Well, some places they don't allow you to smoke in. Like, you have to step outside and okay. smoke. Mm, okay. You know, they, mm. I've been to certain places where they don't allow the smoking. Okay. Yeah. yeah exactly. Okay. Well, yeah. So it's, it's not it's, in all facility. Maybe in, in certain ones, but not all of them. Okay. They banned the smoke so much. Pretty soon, you ain't going to be able to smoke on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> at CVS, they stopped selling cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, wow. CVS yeah, Pharmacy, they yeah, they stopped. Yeah. Or any of the products, cigarette products. Yeah. Yep. I mean, but that's only, I mean... That would only be right though, because it's almost hypocritical right. to say that you're for health. That's you right. Turn it around and selling cigarettes. Come here and get all your health needs met. By the way, you know, stop by and get your yeah. cancer stick. Oh, but the cigarette industry will not be under dead. They got vapor cigarettes now. Yes. And so. they're coming to find out they're just they're just as bad. bad. Oh, what? Exactly. <laughs> they're just as bad, right? You've been checking yes, that out. I heard yes. that. Wow. Tearing young people out of the frame. What? Like, they have a safer alternative, and they're talking about the vapor leaks and the addiction to them, and they're, yeah. they're saying they're just as bad, if not worse. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know. Okay. What about secondhand smoke, though? Because I don't want to be smelling all the, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 impolite smoking and the cigarette and with the second. But it's that's rude, dangerous it's too. It's impolite. Period. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I have been one of those people that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That really actually advocate bands in certain places to smoke. Okay. You know what I'm saying? See, I think that way you have. Yeah. So you get, we got to get involved with that. Boom. Well, I, that I got involved by not smoking because I, I was a smoker and not of the. Uh, uh, regular cigarettes. I'll smoke of the other stuff. But I had to stop that. <laughs> I had to stop it all, unfortunately, but fortunately, it's the most highest will. And this year, we're going to take phone calls. The number is 770-559-2999. We are going to take calls for 2015. So, Tiffany, very briefly, we talked about the Eric Garner, mm -hmm. Mike Brown situation, and you were just explaining how you did really wasn't feeling the whole grandstanding. And I want to thank Gideon as an elder. Mm -hmm. I'm, I want to thank you for coming on the ring and not grandstanding. Because, you know, you get, you get a lot of this if you're grandstanding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You, but you've been able to pass the gavel. There's a lot of elders that wouldn't be able to pass this gavel. Boy, yeah. I had, boy. Oh, oh, I've seen it. the last show. Y'all, yeah. right. <laughs> y'all yeah. was going in. You was going in. I mean, yeah, you was going in on them. Because <laughs> I, 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 I want to, I want to be, you know, get in dialogues. But he just puts, you know, God and y'all into the conversation. <laughs> just like, if we're gonna operate as a council, we have to understand. Well, yeah, you gotta put those to the side and focus on the main issue that's going on. Right, right. right I get that's you. Right. And so, and I'm glad you said that because me and Yanga had the same gripe that you had. You had the speakers come organizing and talked about how long they've been with their girlfriend for 30 years and, mm. and I kept repeating Mike Brown and you know don't stop hands up and I'm like okay where is the strategy and agenda so you seem like a woman who wants some strategy and agenda some action going okay well now where are you asking me here I'm asking you Instead of, oh, because you, you're saying that you didn't want to hear them repeat things over now well, what did you want out of it? I wanted you know, I wanted action. I wanted okay. people to take course of action. I mean, it's cool that you, you know, acknowledge these people, you mm -hmm. know, commemorate them because that's what you're supposed to do anyhow. Mm -hmm. But we need to start taking action. We got to do something. You know, we've been talking for too long. Right. Okay, so we've been talking solutions. Now, when are we going to apply those solutions? Okay. And as far as my concern, I mean, no disrespect to those young ladies and they protesting. Okay. I see what they were trying to do. What were well, they trying to do? They was trying to, you know, they was pretty much making their voice heard and standing out against the okay. uh, oppression by the police and all that stuff. And and I can respect it, but I feel like, you know, the things that they were doing was not enough. And okay. I, I believe that we just need to, like, do a little bit more. I think that we need to put a little bit more aggression or use a little bit of civil disobedience. Okay. So, you like know, hold up the traffic because they did that. I mean, yeah, they hold up traffic, and that's one thing. That's cool. Okay. And also, um, like, what I was uh, seeing from the protest was people getting arrested right. and getting slammed to the ground. These was peaceful protests, and not only right. 
of the protests that happened out here in Atlanta. Also, I was reading about in Berkeley, California, mm -hmm. they was getting tear gas thrown at them right. by the police for no reason. These people weren't doing nothing. Right, right. You see? Yeah. So my thing is that we have to be a little bit more stronger and show them how powerful we are right. and bring in some type of self-defense. So I, I had went from being Martin Luther King for, for a minute mm -hmm. to becoming Malcolm X. <laughs> right. No, no, I'm glad you said that because, um, you know, oh, we got a phone call. Okay, we got a phone call. Your first phone call for 2015, call it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't hear the caller. You got to unmute, you got to unmute where it says phone in, phone in, 21, 20, 22, it says phone in. Leader of Wise Deprivated Original World Nubian, the black activist revolutionary breaking America's racial injustice and neglect. What's, What's going, going on, on brother? brother? What's What's what 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 is your brother Gideon on the Gideon. panel. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, we as black people have to know and understand the system of racism and how it affects our everyday lives as we continuously try to submit ourselves to the Western standard. We also as black people have to know and understand that the truth lies within our past. It's the history of what we experienced here in this country that will give us the knowledge and also the strength to endure whatever is yet to come. We, we, we're steadily being assassinated and steadily being taken out within America as black people only because we won't give America what it has given to us, which is violence. The We Shall Overcome movement is dead. Mm -hmm. We survived it. We endured it. But we can no longer endure any more violence against our people in America. We must now stand up for what we know is the truth, the origin of our past. Peace, brothers and sisters. Right. I, 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 I agree with that. Can I address that? Yeah, yeah, please, please. I agree with the brother to, to an extent. To an extent. I think that when we, look at, when we look at our history, when we look at our young people, when we look at the people, that violence is not the question. We're not afraid of violence. Yeah, we perpetrate acts of violence against our own community every yeah, day. Yeah, all the time. You know what I'm saying? But I think that when you look at a, an overall plan, when you look at defense, I don't think, I think, and even using the word violence is putting it in the hands of the oppressor, putting it in the hands of the enemy. Defense is not necessarily violent. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like Malcolm said, if, if you want to call it violent, then you must be violent against us. You know, we right. are violent to a people who are violent against us. Right. But we met out measurement equated to whatever it needs to be equated to. If you're coming at me, I'm going to defend myself by any means necessary right. for the self-preservation and continuancy of, of my people, of my race, and all of those things. I think, though, but not just that. I like what you said, I agree. It's also our, our, our revolution is a cultural revolution. We first have to have black people or Africa or some, some frame of thought, mm -hmm. some sense of this is where we're coming from and this is what we're trying to achieve. But with, in that frame of thought or in that reference point, our Africa being the center of what we're trying to achieve, to look at what is applicable today. I don't think that, go back to address what Tiffany was saying about with the Mike Brown and the mm -hmm. Eric Garner, a lot of times what violence is, or even these protests is, or just, it's just an emotional outlet. That's right. right. We are people who have learned how to destroy. We know how to use every violent weapon in the, in the world, but do we know how to use the weapons of rebuilding? Or do we know how to use the instruments and tools to rebuild? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the question that us as African people here in America have to ask ourselves, we can burn it down, we can tear it down, but what are we building for ourselves? What institutions are we building to guarantee our empowerment, to guarantee our progression, to guarantee our continuance? That's right. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the legacy of us as black people here in America. So that's my whole thing. I just hope from the whole, I saw a lot of us get very emotional with the Mike Brown and the Eric Garner, which we should have. That's right. It's a righteous indignation. We should right. have been angry. But from that anger after the uh, initial protests and things of that nature, to really have a goal and agenda. To yeah. really say, okay, this is what we're trying to achieve. This is why this act, every action, we, we need to know that every action has a reaction. That's right, yeah. And it has consequences. That's so right. when we just say violence or anything like that, then you also have to teach the people about repression. Police right. repression, government repression, and coming down on your heads. So you have to build institutions that secure the populace, right. the masses, that feed us, that clothe us. Because we can get violent, but if they shut your grocery stores down, brother, if they shut your clothing stores, if they shut your car catalog, too many of us are dependent on our enemy. Right. We need some self-sufficiency and we, some self We need learn agriculture. We need to have oh, more security. Yes. We need uh, better education. 
we need more employment, right. things of that, that nature. We need to start relying on ourselves and one another to be able to uh, bring about these things into the community. Okay. Now, um, I know Yanga, he has suggested uh, that we should uh, march um, and protest on the UN. Yeah. If, if, if you're going to march. Right, right. If you're yeah, going to march. You're gonna march and protest. If you're going right. to lay down in the, in the streets and block up traffic, I'm saying go to the United Nations. Right. right. In front of all of them foreign dignitaries. And right. That's why right. all these Negroes. Hey, go to <laughs> right. these police stations. Go to the courthouse. Yeah. Actually, they did that. Yeah. They did that in Ferguson. They actually they bum rushed, rushed the yeah. dang police station. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, they right. sure did. Right. They, 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 yeah. You know, but like Tiffany said, you're on the road. Any institutes of power. So when the news media comes out, like I said, every action needs to have. We have to have, have our stuff planned. It has to be a reason we're doing this stuff. We have to get away from just sensationalism. Mm -hmm. You know, just the news cameras we're there. And, you know, like I said before, the protests come on and you call your boy, man, watch Channel 5, boy. You're going to see me on the news. You see me <laughs> right, on the news. Right, right. <laughs> you know. See, some people kind of take that and, you know, use it in another way. Like, um... Like start, oh, I'm performing tonight, yeah. you know, I mean. Right, I mean, no. right, right. Instead of like really go off of what the cause is all about. Mm -hmm. You see right, what I'm saying? Right, exactly. Yeah. I see Gideon over here awfully quiet. Right. Like, I, I would love to know your take on something. Well, it's interesting uh, because uh, there, I'm sure he's getting ready for the gavel. No, no, no. <laughs> no, uh -oh. no, it's uh, when we look at our people, and you really highlighted the issue of a, a visceral, emotional response, and because of a lack of, it wasn't that it wasn't coordinated and organized, it was that the direction in which this anger was directed, I believe was misdirected. Mm -hmm. Because see, the police department, they are agents or they are officers of a higher authority. See, the police don't come out on their own. They have to, warrants have to be issued. They have to have protective orders. They are, they have what's called sovereign immunity. And what does that mean? That means that the police are operating as agents of the judiciary. Wait, but wait, wait a minute, hold on. Let me yeah, say yeah, something. Yeah, Let me yeah. say something. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, police can also take initiative and do things on their own. Yeah. On their own, you know what I'm saying? Without the order given to them from the people up top. Okay? So I I understand where you're coming from, but you gotta also look at these people choose to they pick and choose who they want to protect and serve. Mm -hmm. They pick and choose who they want to, you, you know, pull their weapons out on. Mm -hmm. They pick right. and choose. So, you know, it, um, you know, for you to just say that, we got to look at the other issue as well. We got to look on the flip side of that, too. So. Well, my point is simply that, uh, like a child, a child can go out and choose to be a bully in the streets. And that child may end up bullying another child, but at the end of the day, it's the parents that's going to be called. Because the parents, mm. even though the child went and bullied another child, the school system or the child that was bullied, they're going to call their parents. And then, So what I'm telling you is that you have to look beyond the actual perpetrator and look to the system that not only protects the perpetrator, but gives them the idea that when they perpetrate these heinous acts, they're being protected. Mm -hmm. See, they, they're not protecting themselves. They're being protected by judiciary. Well, so, beginning, what about the situation in New York when they turn their back on the mayor? Because the mayor is supposed to be above them. But you Therein the lies my point, because they have become rogue. See, so, and when the, the mayor is a, he is a symbol. Right, the mayor is supposed to be for the people, meaning everybody. So right. you have you have the citizens and you have the police. So he's supposed to be over that city. And he, so for them to turn their back is just like, I mean, us turning our backs on the police. I'm just saying. Uh, turning our backs on our parents at the end of the day, the problem no, I again. Police, dang it. I know. I, okay, I okay. just <laughs> simply say it's the same. It's a similar effect because, see, when we can fight the police, we can go out and start and do what we do, uh, uh, rush the police station. But when the judges who are profiting off putting our children in juvenile, mm -hmm. and it's been proven they've been, been paid for that. And don't forget the that. prosecutors. The prosecutors, the district attorneys. You have to look beyond who's laying your fist on them and look at the system that's protecting these people who are laying their fist. Yeah, but Gideon, you're, you're against the very way you can get these. Uh, there was a judge in Pennsylvania that was sending, getting kickbacks and they, they had to be brought to the forefront. And exactly. you know what I'm saying is that you have to have people 
and it goes back to voting, mm-hmm. registering to vote, because that's the one way. If you, you know, what I'm saying, if you threaten a person's job, maybe they get the act together. Well, see, it, the the issue of voting, is, you know, we differentiate on that. We right. have and we're gonna talk about Obama too. His his accomplishments. I, I, I do want to speak on that. Right. But see, the issue of voting does not change the nature of a man's heart, oh, right. and it does do not that. impact <laughs> the system that was created. To perpetuate white supremacy. See, this young, this is why you need Joe Gamble. Come slow. <laughs> okay. You know, Wait. that's that, that, that's 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 now that's one of my that's one of my big. We look at changing it. First of all, they don't love you. They don't love you. <laughs> they we don't care us. about they love. Right. We don't care if they love us. We don't care if they like us. I could even care less if they speak my name or want to speak to me. But you will respect me, and I think that that's the biggest thing. The government is not here. The government, their government, shouldn't be based off love. You know, I, one of the things is, is that when you look at people who get, uh, participate in the political process, it's not so much trying to win. That's the integration. It's a similar theory. We want to be just like the white man. We want them to love us, or we want to be like America, whatever people, we want them to love us. But it is about making sure that rules and policies aren't in place that, can, that are targeted, uh, that are specifically for us to target us. Right. And that's what, that's the importance of, um, of, of the participation. Mm-hmm. To make sure, you know, the uh, uh, in, in proportionate sentencing, like they did right. with the crack cocaine as far as uh, uh, powder cocaine, cocaine that's right. things of that nature. To make sure that you have, you know, these DAs, these prosecuting attorneys, these judges, you do know they run. You know what I'm right. saying? You do know that they are voted and put in place. Yep. So things that a lot of the complaints and gripes that we have, I think that if a participation in the political process could remove, and if not, if it didn't remove it, at the very least, it would show the hypocrisy. It would show the people the hypocrisy of the political process, and then it would start to force the people to look at alternatives into changing the very system that oppresses them. But if we have if we have an apathetic approach, if we take the approach that we don't care, that we're not going to get involved, it's not going to change anything. I mean, because you got, I'm sorry, but you got to think about it. You got to think about it. people vote and vote, but see, it's going to take a little. And I, I get where he's coming from mm-hmm. with that. It's going to take a little bit more than just voting. And I'm not, no, no, I'm not, I'm not knocking I, people I for no, voting, but at the same time, you got to look at why people choose not to vote. Because they feel like a lot of times, especially with these politicians, mm-hmm. They only take people vote in just to get into those offices. Yeah, absolutely. That's you know what, what I'm they saying? Do. So they can sit here and they give you all these different agendas they have mm-hmm. and tell you all the stuff to make you feel good mm-hmm. and all that mm-hmm. just so they can get you to vote for them and put in that. But at the end of the day, it's not your vote don't really count. Tip, tip, tip. No, no, your vote don't really count. No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me, give, me give me give an example. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me give you an example. When Obama, he's now bending his back over for the Hispanics, is he not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been in his back over, yeah. okay, because they, as a group, saying, you know what, we they, right, they know the accountability, and they know right. that their, their numbers, the Hispanics as a group, are gonna vote collectively. And that's number one. And then what about the what about the homosexuals? They got gay marriage, right? But see, what you know? do you see? What they had to do other than just vote? Do you see what they had exactly. to do? Other I agree. Than I, just agree. Vote? I agree. I agree. But that's I agree. what we're saying. That's what we're saying as far as African people. You get what what happens to us. First of all, we don't we don't hold anyone to accountability. We vote. We 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 have this Messiah we'll complex. Right. We want somebody to come save our ass. I'm gonna vote Obama, and now we mad because President Obama did he did nothing for black people. But you don't know what he did. Period. You know what I'm saying? I mean, one of the things he has one of the worst damn track records of any presidency as far as going against American citizens. But black people, once we put a black man in office, we backed up. We thought the job was done. Right. So we have to, when we vote, we have to stop having what I call unaccountable spending and unaccountable politics to where we just see a black face and we put them in office. You have to stay on top of them. You have to make sure that they represent your best But interest. see, first and foremost, see, this is what gets so, this is what holds us back as a people. We too busy looking for a leader yeah, right, to agree, lead yes, us. yes. Why not be your own leader? Start exactly. with yourself. Exactly. Be your own politician. Exactly. Meet exactly. well, you yourself with you, your seat. When you put all your trust on somebody else, everything is not going to be a comfort. You're not going to get the job done. You got to take that initiative. You got to make that change the way you want it Absolutely. to be. You know, that absolutely. change starts with you, not with that person. Absolutely. But right. it's like this, right. Tiff. It's like this. You're absolutely right. But it's like this. We start with ourselves, but you can't be your own doctor. No, if you can't you had, be your oh, own doctor. Hear me out. If you needed something, that if you have a black person that does a specific job, like medical, then your job 
as a responsible black man and woman is to find the best physician that Why? represents your, your yes, needs, right. your interests, that is going to address your specific issues and targets. I'm not going to say, well, you know, forget looking for somebody to do for me. I'm, I'm about to sit here and do surgery on my damn self. No, you're going to no. find that best medical physician. You're going to find the best mechanic. You're going to find the best school teacher. So you need to find, if you have someone that has devoted themselves to politics, that's not really my, check me out, that's not really my biggest forte. But if you have someone like the so-called Senators John Lewis or yeah. um, uh, uh, Congressman yeah. Ford, yeah. you know, you have these people that are trying, playing within the arena they play in. First of all, we have to know. Let me say this, brother. First of all, you have to know they're not revolutionaries. That's they're right. reformists. They're politicians. So they play by specific rules. So you yes. have to know the rules that they play by. Then you find the most radical, the best one that is representing you. And then you say, hey, look, why are they building a jail in Vine City instead of a community center? That's why right. Well, you ain't got the mayor and berries no more. No, you don't have them. You, you don't have the mayor and berries. We, 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 we don't put them in. The black man, we 90% of us give our votes to Democrats without any accountability. We That's just right. vote Democratic because historically. Like, like he said, like Son said, when you look at the Hispanic community, when you look at the LGBT community, when you look at all of these other communities, they have specific goals and interests. The black man and woman here in America hasn't said, this is our specific goal and this is That's our right. sp specific interest. We don't know what we want. Ask any brother or sister, what do you want? I want money, I want the rims, homie. I want to this. <laughs> that mean, because we've been conditioned we that way. We have there been conditioned. Go. I agree. Right. Been, but but let, because, me, let, okay. me, let me just say this. Uh, first of all, uh, we're slaves in this country. God yes. damn it, we are not slaves. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, go Secondly, ahead. Bush Gore. Bush Gore. People, the popular vote, Gore won. Mm -hmm. But because of Jeb Bush in Florida, mm -hmm. he swung the votes, yeah. and it was the electoral college mm -hmm. that ended up taking the election, yeah. which, which proved that the popular vote does not have an impact that we thought it mm -hmm. does because they manipulate the system. Secondly, right. well, they create landslides, Gideon, like Obama did when he did went against uh, what's his name and uh, McCain and the other yeah. dude. You know what I'm saying? Create landslides. Don't make it questionable. Well, see, so if we if we register by numbers and come out, and I say let's be transparent about our vote. Let's all come to the table and say we're going to vote this way, like we did back. Like like, like, well, see, sure. this is this is the thing. What you're dealing with right now is a council. Mm -hmm. On this council, this is the government. Yeah. Because this is reaching thousands of people, and the issue is the collective bargaining that we have from this panel, and as we are operating and allowing people to call in and give their position creates a mindset and a focal point where if we wanted to really develop an agenda, then we could do so. Yeah. See, the, the power that we have as a people is not relegated to a governmental uh, position mm -hmm. where the Europeans who hate us and their uh, and capitalist agenda is to prop it off of us. Mm -hmm. right. It's not going to change by us voting it because exactly. the system has manifestly been created mm -hmm. to keep a permanent underclass, yeah. as you all well know. No, but get in, I, I think uh, what, what, you know, I understand what you're saying, but the, the, the dynamics have changed. They, about 10 years ago, there was no such thing as gay marriage. And 10 years ago, there was no such thing as a, 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 the Dream Act. You know what I'm saying? We were trying to get the marriage kids and keep them across the border. And we weren't trying to marry okay. a man with another Hold man, on. but now it's changed. Because these were voting, these were people that came together and said, look, like the homosexuals, they got together and said, you know, ain't nobody, we being persecuted, ain't nobody taking care of us, so we're going to form our own political party, we're going to form our own economy, like, they form their own world. But see, you missed what I just said. Okay. This capitalist system is designed to keep a permanent underclass. underclass. Yeah. Okay, and as okay, a, okay. And the permanent okay. underclass is us. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> and, proven. And, and here's the thing, here's the problem with us as people. We have given so much power to the government, but mm -hmm. here's the thing, the mm -hmm. government does not have as much power as we think. Right. Exactly. Because the power really resides in, in us. In the right. people. Right, in the people, but we just don't use those power because we've been taught how to be complacent. Yeah. Right. We have been we have been conditioned to live in fear. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, especially like with the police, for example. Mm -hmm. Right. Like when we try to exercise our rights to them or when we try to defend ourselves, mm -hmm. a lot of people are not going to want to fight back against the cops because of all these weapons they got mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're not going to take that risk mm -hmm. because they are in fear. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what's keeping people back is fear. they like, okay, 
well, you know what? I don't think I want to do this. Oh, let's see. Maybe I, maybe I just do it this way. Oh, nah, nah. You know what? Right. I, I don't want to play a part in that. No, yeah. I, I, I don't yeah. want to risk my life. Right. You know, people come up with different excuses to That's why right. they don't want to sacrifice or why they don't want to do things because of uh, that. The repression, right? Right. I think yeah. one, one of the things with me, I think that we haven't, we haven't. One of the things when you look at other groups like the Jews, they have not only not only come together, but they have what they use, use their experience as a motivational force. Mm -hmm. Auschwitz and the Holocaust and the whole nine. That's mm -hmm. right. They say never again. I mean, that's right. one of their catchphrases, never again. So that, that has become a part of their psyche and a part of their culture to be on the lookout for things that even remind them of the hell. They got on Nicki, Nicki Minaj had a video with some things oh, that yeah. were similar to Nazi Germany. So and they came out, you know, and the Jews came out, and the Jewish people came out, the ADL and all these people. She had some signs on there that looked like him. <laughs> right. They wore Nazi uniform. I mean, you can't even have anything that was Similar, even right. gives them a damn flashback. They nut up. Yeah. Right. And they're going to squeeze. So until black people come together and have that political power, that economic power, and that physical muscle. Let me check this out, but I'm going to address a couple of things. The Bush-Gore thing, voting. I don't think that any black person and I hope not any sane black person thinks that voting will change this system. It's not about changing this system. You can't vote in a system to change a system. Voting and participating in the political process is only something to insulate us against the changing times. It is a, a strategy. It is you have people on there that are saying, like you look at Ferguson, I forget, they're like, what, 80 some percent, 90 percent yeah, black? Yeah, heck yeah. Why do you have a white police chief? Right. Why do you have all of these white police officers? Those are positions. Because voting don't work, that, yo. Yeah, because voting don't work. Those are positions that are voted on. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just little things like that. These laws, these disproportionate laws and sentencing specifically directed and targeted at black people. You have to have people participating in a political, a watch group, a watchdog group. Yeah. Every group has it. The Hispanic community has watchdog groups that's watching the government movement. When they do something yes. about immigration, they send their Paul Revere to ride to the Hispanic. Yo, homes, they trying to do this. The homosexuals do it. The uh, yep. Jewish people do it. Every other group does it except for the black people. We, we got to turn on the news to find out what the hell they doing to us. <laughs> Why? That's the first thing. Secondly, or oh, find out in the courtroom. In the courtroom, right? Man, I didn't know that was what they tell you. Ignorance is no excuse right. for the law. You know, man, I didn't know that was a law. Yeah, right. Ignorance is no excuse for the law. Right. Hundred years, and they give you that because we don't have watchdog groups. Secondly, with the uh, Gore Bush thing, this is the problem of not developing a revolutionary-minded people. See, what happens is they did the same thing with Gore Bush hijacking the votes. They do to us with Mike Brown. And so That's what? Right. So we took your votes. What you gonna do, man? They took our votes. I'm done voting. <laughs> right. And we don't do nothing. Yeah, they took it in our face. Jacked us. Jenner found them in the closet. Damn, here all the Negro votes right here. That's right. But what did we do? That's the point. They're not going to stop trying us until there's some type of action that says, okay, this isn't beneficial for us to keep messing with these Negroes. One of them I advocate, and in my conclusion, like what Brother Malcolm did, was human rights violations. That's right. Building case. When you come and say they violate our human rights and go to the world court and say, look, even in their political process, and that's so called right. democracy. That's telling how many times has America went in there and snatched places saying this is an illegal vote. We're going to send in some observers to That's make right. sure this vote goes correctly. This, well, we want the same thing. That's we right. want you in observers. We want people to come in and say our human rights are being violated. This, this, this so-called democracy is a farce. And if we don't have outside intervention, then we will keep getting hot. We will keep getting bamboozled. That's right. But we don't. We don't. <laughs> well, we sit back. Yeah, we're building yeah, the case. Let's let's build the let case. Me, Tiffany, let me let me, let me address okay. that briefly. And and I want to say simply, and this is going to take us to a point where we've talked about before. Governments deal with governments. All right. I Overstand agree. this: when you have been marginalized, profited off of, and then misidentified. Mm -hmm. What we're operating from is a position that they gave us. They called us black. It's not what I call you. It's mm -hmm. what you answer to. They called us Negro. They called us color. Get in and semantics. I, no, no, it's more than semantics. Because, <coughs> see, at the end of the day, when the Mexicans came in. They called the, homosexuals faggots. But they still Vicente, got their power. Well, well, but the, uh, they called the Mexicans wetbacks. When but they still Vicente got power. Fox who was president of Mexico, okay. said that blacks don't want to work. That's why we're coming over there to uh, take their jobs. That was on the back of NAFTA. Mm -hmm. That was a government yeah. dealing with another government. Yeah. When you have people who don't have a government because they have been the property because they were taken, we've never established an identity. That's why I... That I, is not, not 
you know, Gideon, we have established identity. It's just that what is it? It's black. It's no such thing. It is. No, it is. See, and it this, is. this is the problem. This is the problem right here. Right. This is the big. Okay. This is the big problem. This is why black people will not be coming together and unified because as long as we sit here and argue who is a more, right. who is a commander, right. who's Thank a you. Hebrew right. Israelite, who's an African. Right. Forget all that nonsense, okay? Let's put that I to the agree. side. You got a situation that is that needs to be taken care of right at hand. That's right. My put that to the side. We don't care if you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite, African, committed, right. Moors, whatever. You, you cause we all in the same boat. As far as they concerned, we all Negroes, okay? Exactly. As far as they're concerned, we all blacks. Okay, whether you label yourself that or not. So you need to just put that to the side and focus on what you gotta do. What is it that we need to look at, okay, we got poverty in the community. Let's deal with the poverty. We got lack of education. Let's deal with the lack of education. Yes, we got, you know, uh, police brutality. Let's deal with this. Let's see how we going to break about security. Let's see about how we going to break agriculture. Right. How we going to put all this foundation together for our people. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that we need to focus on. We need to come together on one common goal and not sit here and put a separation between our, our, amongst ourselves because, like I said, at the end of the day, we all deal with the same issue. And I wanted to jump in on that it's, and, and to go back to what Gideon says. I think that that's one of the biggest misnomers that we have, that we have to go through and we have to be where's black land, where's this land. Nationality, nation is defined as a people from the same landmass or a people with a shared experience. The black man and woman, the African woman, the Kemetic, the Moor, whatever we're calling ourselves here in America, have the shared experience of slavery, exactly. degradation, oppression, uh, uh, exploitation, and all the other rest of the most horrendous words that you can even pull out of that English right. dictionary. We all have that common shared experience, and we're all being targeted for genocide. Exactly. So what ends up happening is, like you said, by us not, we get caught up in the semantics of, well, we don't have a nation. We, we You would be surprised China recognizes us That's right. as human rights violation. Russia, yeah, sure. I think, says something Cuba. else. Cuba. Brazil. Said, so there are, there are countries that say, hey, we recognize the plight. And one of the human violations, one of their human rights violations is the right to self-determination. These people in this land don't even know who the hell they are. Mm. That's one of the crimes. That's one of the. That's one of our crimes we're leveling against them. The fact that we're over here arguing about am I Kemetic, am I Moorish, am right. I Egyptian, am I this is one of the crimes we're leveling against the racist United States. Is that you have raped us of our identity so much so that we're over here fighting for an identity and a lot mm -hmm. of them that don't even belong to us. So I think get off the identity issue and get all on the shared experience and the crimes that have been perpetrated against the people and saying that we can't, we will not ever receive justice from the very country that perpetrated the most horrendous slave trade, the Maafa, in human history, the transatlantic slave trade from Africa, the African's Holocaust, uh, the worst crime that has been committed in, in human history by a people we will never receive justice for them. So there is no such thing as civil rights. They are not being civil with us. There's no such thing as being an integrationist or a similist. None of that will ever work for us. And the only thing, the only factor until we establish ourselves to give us that, that breathing room, to give us those people to back up from us who willfully hinder us, who willfully obstruct us from pursuing our own destiny, is to have these uh, so-called civil nations. And right. some of the nations that are civil, That's right. you know what I'm saying? But to have these nations recognize that there is a war being perpetrated against people of African descent right here in America. Now, let me just say this, because first of all, and I'm, I'm going to disrespect, I mean, Go respectfully ahead. disagree. Okay, okay. And what so I was respectfully disagree on is that we don't understand what we want, how we want it. That takes the Messiah, I'll lose that. That takes Marcus Garvey, that takes... Uh, Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad, that, that just throws them under the bus. Get because, in, get, wait get, a minute, hold on, hold okay. on. See, we, we're the smartest people on the planet. We are, and to say that we, we don't, don't understand what we want is to deny our intellect. See, on one hand, well, wait, wait, we, can we, we say we, don't, we can't agree? Because I said we need transparency. No, no, Mike no. Mike Brown and Eric Garner proved that with the now. jury's coming back saying, well, we didn't find any evidence. And we hold didn't on, hold see. on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's take the black farmers, so-called. Well, no, let's, let's, take, let's, take let's take the jury. I want transparency. I want transparency and know what's going on and be able to explain why you didn't, you know, find uh, the police. Okay, like Eric Garner. The man said he can't breathe. Exactly. The man had his neck around. He said, I can't breathe. Now, I would like them to go before the world, not only for black people, but before the world, and explain why 
This is not an illegal chokehold. Well, they know it's an illegal. They've been killing us no, no, ever no, no, since no, we got off the block. You're missing, you're missing no, the you missing your point. No, I got your point. I want the, you missed I want my the, point. No, no, my point is I want them to explain it to the world. But listen, them explaining why they're killing us then since they ain't never stopped killing us, that makes no sense whatsoever. See, when I mentioned no, no, the so-called, it. when I mentioned the farmers, this, see, if we can eat, if we got food, if we can mm -hmm. make our, build our own houses, when they took Rosewood, uh, Auburn Avenue, Tulsa, Oklahoma, that showed you that we know what we're doing. That showed you that we're economically solvent, that we're intelligent, that we know how to prepare and provide for ourselves. What did they do? They had the farmers who had the land, they said, look, stop farming. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we're going to pay you not to grow exactly. food. Right. We're going to make sure that your people have to come to us. Yeah. That right. is a part of the system of white supremacy and slavery. Right. So we right. always Those had the intellect. But you see, know what we want to know. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for you to get to the, you were saying that us knowing what we want. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting here. What we too. want has to do with our inability, just like on this show. What we're doing is arguing about, not necessarily arguing, yeah. we're debating on the various issues of white supremacy and how they used us unjustly, they never stop. Mm -hmm. they what they we should stop. be doing, in my uh, very humble opinion, is giving, uh, providing this venue for our people to talk about economic development, which is part of our spiritual development. See, we have the ability to promote jobs, we have the ability to educate ourselves. We so need keep, to have so the community. The going. Yeah. No, no. A job, Develop, a job, a job, job is a current system. Right? No, Business. what I'm saying, right. like I said, the so-called black farmers, okay. the educators, they, they even, didn't they attack the educators through the uh, CRTT scandal, yeah. right, which right. was doing what they were told to do, right. and they criminalized these right. people. So at the end of so the day. Need, they, those farmers need protection. So you, you got to have, like, if they come in and economically squeeze them, they have to have a, a, a base where they're economically and physically protected. You see what I'm saying? Because well, if you we if can't you, protect me in my house. If I'm in your house and mm -hmm. I want to start doing something in your house, this the white this is stolen property. This white man ain't you think he done stole and killed the well, Indians I mean, and committed genocide? Well, I mean, you think he gonna give us anything? I'm not saying give anything. That's what, what I'm saying. saying. And when I say that we don't know what we want, I'm not talking about and this would this is never to downplay the likes of such great. In our histories, as the Elijah Muhammad's, the, right. Ma uh, the Marcus Messiah Garvey's, the Martin Delaney's, and the likes, never to downplay them, but they have only addressed and expressed what they want as groups, as right. small as small little groups. Elijah Muhammad want what do we want? We want everybody acknowledge for our Muhammad is Allah and the person and this and that. And we want this. Right. And we want complete so and we want this. They didn't get involved. We don't. We're not going to carry guns. We're going to sell bean pies and newspapers. They doing their thing, and I'm not knocking their thing, but that's what they wanted. You right. Know, but his lights want something else. Uh, the Moors want this, you know. Right. I had one more tell me we have to be divided as white or something. You can't be if they call you black, and you know. So everybody wants, but I'm talking about as a people, as a collective, as yeah, a collective right, yes. with a shared experience. I'm not knocking any like Francis Fanon says, and you often hear me repeat this: that you can't tell any man how to fight. That's right. So I'm not knocking anybody's contribution to our empowerment, to our liberation, but to mm -hmm. speak for as a whole. Like one of the things that the uh, um, Hispanic communities say that they want they want to be able to practice self-determination they want their people to be come over here they want to be able to grow and expand without uh, hindrance or without encumbrance right. so they fight on all fronts of that they've the gotten after they, they got NAFTA, but what else they got? They, they got them. It. They got them cellos, and they got them essays to back That's it up right. on the street, so they get physical with you with the machine gun power. That's they right. got the political power. Then they start getting the economic power by buying the stores and not just going. See, they don't just go get a job. You know what I'm saying? They one of them go get the job, and next thing you know, they own the whole line care service. So it, right. it's not just about jobs. So even when we're looking at economic development, I question when we say let like this buy black. Are we buying black for upper, mo upper mobility in a capitalist system? Or are we actually trying to get economic development to change the whole system That's that is more question. of an African communal system that empowers the whole community? See, I'm not going to give go from getting a, a white man rich to a black man rich just because he's black. Right. Buy so black, my brother. Right. Well, and he leave the hood and go to Buckethead with his blonde haired blue eyed wife. Let That's me show right. you something that Obama did that I have to. 770-559-2999, call in and get some of this. Go ahead, get in. Let me show you something that Obama did that I think that was a powerful statement and that is going to have the ripple effects and really prove to us what we're about. Cuba. Yeah. 
Right. Cuba, and for you Americans, Cuba. Cuba. Yeah, right. But it's sound when they. That's right. It's Cuba. That's right. When they when they sent Beyonce and JC over there to kind of open up the door. Yeah. They it was establishing something, and of course, Bo Barack came in afterwards after getting a call from Papa. He went to see the Pope. Yeah. The Pope told him that he needed, and then called the head of Cuba, yeah. that is uh, the brother Raul. of Raul. Raul. And now they have uh, a, a, uh, the ability call. for us to go to Cuba, That's where right. we were, did not have before. This is economic development we can develop. All right, Carla, you're on. Caller, caller, camera one, camera one, caller. Okay, I guess they hung Tell up. Tell them, okay, they hung up. Yeah, 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 call us yeah. back, call yeah, us so back. So my, my point is simply this. Now we have the ability to use a nation that has shown not only is it not afraid of America, mm -hmm. it never bowed, and just like Haiti. I was in Haiti in 08. They showed their resilience. Well, it's Haiti for us. Haiti. It's Haiti. Okay. Haiti. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. And so what we see, when we see Cuba now, we have the ability now to travel there, to use that they have free education, mm -hmm. free medical. And when I say free, it's paid well, for well, by well, the well, people. We got to push for, let, let, me, let me say this, because I'm, I'm trying to send my son over there right now. There you go. We got to push for the education, meaning if our sons and daughters go over there to be educated, that they have to recognize it in America because you got a lot of doctors going over there being doctors, but America won't recognize it. So we have to push for that. No, see, this is we the thing. We have to push for that. We, you say, well, if, I, if I'm sick, then I need to go get a special. Well, if I'm sick, the, my, the, my philosophy is says, physician heal yourself. Yeah. In essence, that's through your food, mm -hmm. your lifestyle, your, your health is your wealth. So we have the ability through this program, the program that I produce, to galvanize the community around economic development, spiritual development, educational facility. Now, we come on these programs and all we do is argue about the symptoms of the problems of white supremacy. We never get anything done. Wow. But when we begin to allow people to call in about their businesses, develop an agenda for the arena to where we can infuse those concepts to where we can make meaningful change, then the grassroots level begins to rise up because this vehicle, this tool is one of the most powerful. That's why when Oprah and Bill went to buy CBS, they had the money, the reputation and everything. And what did Whitey tell them? No, no. Go ahead. It, 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 um. Oh, yeah. I want to say something as far as uh, getting free education and free Medicare in uh, uh, Cuba. Uh, Cuba, as we say it in the English language. <laughs> That's right. My thing is, you know, it's very sad. We shouldn't, this is my opinion, we okay. shouldn't, uh, as so-called American citizens, have to go to another country just to get free education and Medicare oh, yeah. when your own country should be able to provide it. Because if you can take out billions of dollars and still be trying and still be uh, collecting tax dollars from people through the internal revenue services to get money for weapon and all that stuff. That's right. You should be able to, you know, bring about free health care and free education so where people won't have to come struggling out their own pockets mm -hmm. and figure out how they're going to be able to maintain uh, their good right, health right. and how they're going to be able to stay alive or how they're going to be able to, you know, get through the process of school and go and get their degree and all that. That's just my and that's, stance. And that's smart. One of the things I want to talk about, Cuba. Is that, is that right? Cuba. Cuba. Is that? Cuba. Um, is that it was, you know, you look at it, capitalism is, is a beast, like you said, that has to keep an a underclass. Absolutely. It is a beast that lives off of consumerism. Right. People constantly buying. Parasite. A par you know, right. You, if, if, if it doesn't have anything self, if you're not buying into it, then it doesn't exist. One of the things of it opening up Cuba, one of the latest cars that Cuba has is from 1961. Hmm. That's so right. one of the tricks is everybody's on this Cuba, oh, Cuba, and he opened up Cuba so they can flood Cuba's market. Right. <laughs> All right. So yeah. these big industries can get in there so they can get a McDonald's in Cuba. They're trying to get that Dairy Queen, that Dunkin' Donut, 36 Of flavors, course, they like that going in the You know what I'm saying? They want to say, you know, Ford's going to build a plant in Cuba. So it's oh, to wow. the capitalism. Has has you know this country, this imperialist country, has beat other people and has put embargoes on everybody else. And after a while, it doesn't have anything to deport. We went through as many wars as we can go through, so it has to start to look for new victims. 
Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And that's, so it opens up. So, you know, one of the one of the things is, hey, you know, okay, Cuba's just off the thing. It ain't been really that bad. We ain't heard nothing. Right. The Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore, so Cuba's not really a real threat. You know what I'm saying? As being a satellite of the USSR. Mm -hmm. So let's open up, let's lift the embargo, and let's flood them with our bull stuff. Like, hey, yeah, and that's how I feel. You know, what you're saying, right? That's the way I feel when I uh, came across that the, uh, Cuba made a, uh, an agreement, yeah. agreement mm -hmm. with the U.S. I said, oh, goodness. He's like, hands I off said, the side of the I too. said, yeah, I right. said, oh, goodness. It's, it, I, it's an agenda behind that because they ain't just going over there just for a domestic yeah. relation. That's it's right. something else behind dog. it. Mm. Yeah, and they trying to, like they did with all the other countries, mm -hmm. they're trying to reshape how Cuba operates yeah. and, uh, mm. me and mess up their economy. Mm -hmm. That's the way I mm -hmm. see it. And, yeah, that's why I keep your hands off of Sh uh, Shada. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, keep your hands <laughs> off her. <laughs> well, see, if you think the Cuban... <laughs> people are gonna let whitey just walk up in their country and take over like that then you don't understand the resilience of, of and the, the might i don't think they will of their people no. i don't think i, I don't they, think they, will. they uh they understand the slave trade they understand white supremacy mm -hmm. they understand just like the haitian right. people see we are one people we, exactly and see this is the other thing i wanted to mention about government but the, i, I want to ask you go ahead sir. about cuba real quick because yes, i don't think that they will i don't think that they will willfully let an invade army but do they know about materialism? Right. See, it's one thing to say, you know, they can say what they're not going to do. But it's another thing when you got that 56-inch in front of your face with an Xbox <laughs> right. and a Big Mac in your hand. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? And you forget because in Atlanta, just like we live down here, you don't, they're not going to send the white man to run the McDonald's. It's going to be Cuban. Right. That's right. That's they're right. not going to send, it's not going to be white men in the Ford Motor plants and putting mm -hmm. these new cars out. They're going to be Cuban. So they're looking at jobs. Mm -hmm. They're right. looking at a whole nother, you know, tax break, a whole nother economic system yes. is coming into play. Well, see, what you mm -hmm. mentioned about the uh, the old cars, not only does it show that the old cars are still good. Okay. That, that <laughs> in America, that it's, they are trying to just keep everything. They make, It's called manufactured obsolescence. Mm. They have mm -hmm. manufactured the vehicles today yeah. that they gonna break down. Oh, absolutely. The stuff they used to make, as we see in Dora. Cuba, yeah. is still <laughs> yeah, yeah. running. Right. Right. Not only this, when we talk about governments, governments can comprise themselves of Muslims, Hebrews. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter but what wait, your label wait, is. Wait, 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 but, hold on, hold on, hold on. Get go it, ahead, get it. I got yeah, to say this. I got, got to like say this. this. I got over. to say this, Let though. Because as an atheist, I've been infiltrated these organizations, yes, and they all talk about a theocracy, Gideon. So I'm gonna ask you today, right now, yes, sir. in this government, mm -hmm. will you will you stop the agenda of your Bible trying to enforce a theocracy? Have I stopped being your friend? No. Do we still work together? Yeah. Is there an agenda You're for collectivism my, in yeah, our uh, community? See, I've asked Yanga the same question, <laughs> and because he's a nationalist, he puts nationalism first. See, you, you as a Hebrew Israelite don't seem to do that. You're still debating you me, in semantics. You're still semantics with who we are as a people and this and that. And your leadership, Gideon, your organization will not come together because they want a theocracy. It's planted in them. It's planted in everybody. Even Yanga will vouch for me, even the Muslims. Well, now, what, the you, what you just said and what Yanga was talking about, people, he said there'll be... Cubans in the McDonald's or whatever. Right. See, we've had almost 400 years no, of that's how you didn't propaganda. My oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm getting to your my, question. Okay. We have, so we have a mindset prepared for the acceptance of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Now, what was your question again? Now? My question is, will you drop the theocracy? Because okay. everybody at the table is not going to accept the Bible. And, and I did answer your question. I okay. said, even though we you don't have the same philosophy as it pertains to deity, mm -hmm. we still work together. That's called collective bargaining right, and but unification you have on are, common goals and principles. And that's wonderful for Gideon. Yes, but sir. let's talk about all the other, you know, 770-559-2999. That's right. This go, and see, I've asked Yanga the same question. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I trust Yanga mm -hmm. because he's a black nationalist, but for all the other Muslims out there, bomb him. Mm. <laughs> like Miriam, mm -hmm. bomber. 
put her on the list. I'm mm. serious about mm. that. What? Yeah, she's a terrorist, man. Mm. That's what? just, hey. Wow. I mean, I mean, no, Mary's my girl. No, no, no. no my, Mary's my girl. Hey, shout out to Mary. Yes, she's sorry. my girl, but her ideologies are dangerous. Well, you have to I'm understand, black is a realist. Yeah, you know. That's why we no, have no, to be no, able no, to accept that, realism. No. Mary's my girl. I'm just, you know, I'm joking. Mm. But no, really, she's for theocracy. No, he ain't joking, by the way. I mean, because you hey, okay, you gotta say, that's how she grew up. That's how you know what it is. That's how she's been conditioned. That's how she's been taught. That's how most most Arabs grow up. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, their agenda is Arab supremacy. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you join a religion, everybody join Islam. At the end of the day, it's gonna be some type of Arab group that goddamn dominates. And it's funny because I saw this interview with these Israelis and they said, who's more of a threat? Das or Hamas? Das meaning ISIS. They're like, you know, they were back and forth. But my thing is, once ISIS coming in, in the vicinity of, of Hamas, they're going to start fighting. Mm-hmm. They're going to start fighting because a lot of them don't understand that DAS has a lot of our agents in there. Let's get a call. Let's get a call. All right, call her. Call her your own. Call. Call her. Yeah, well, first, first and foremost, we must come to the understanding that religion really has no position in our liberation. That's right on. Uh, religion is like sexism. They use those things to divide us based upon our beliefs when we most definitely should understand that the past and the reality of our history develops to make us understand who we are as a people, as a Americans. You know what I'm saying? They say Americans won't have the ability to travel the planet as other people of the planet will have in the near future only because um, America is a democracy built on capitalism and bullies, Mm -hmm. bullies, the government that bullies the world, the nations. Mm -hmm. But one thing for sure and two things for certain, if we don't know nothing, the devil's time is almost up. He knows it. God Almighty will inflict his punishment on America. She will fall because regardless of how many nuclear weapons she has, regardless of how strong her army is, when God moves the elements of the planet upon the sun, the moon, and the stars, hurricanes, rain, snow, typhoons, earthquakes, there's nothing that their army will be able to do about it. Right on. The only yes, thing I disagree with that we gonna wait on the rain and y'all. We gonna wait, be waiting forever. Wait a minute. Now I got one thing to say as right. far as religion's concerned. Okay. See, as I was playing to the elder earlier before uh, we got in here. Oh, the long-winded elder. Um, Doug Martin. Go oh, ahead, well, yeah. yeah. Okay, but here's the thing about religion that people don't understand. People don't have an understanding of religion is really supposed to bring you back to the oneness of yourself. Really? Yeah, well, think about it. Hold on, think okay, about it. I'm thinking about it. Just think about it because the word religion comes from the term religios, which means which to, means to bind. To bind. To bind. Yeah, that's right. To bind. Okay. So okay. if you look at it, it's basically it brings you back to who you are. You know, it's about enlightening yourself. Me. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. You want to be bound? No, 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 okay, no, no. Right, listen I'm to what I'm okay, saying now. Right, listen right, listen right. to where I'm going with okay. this. All right. At the end of the day, it's not about serving Allah, Yahweh. Or Elohim, or anybody, or any of those deities, is about serving yourself and your purpose. Look, That's what wait it's really. A I yeah, just, that, 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 now, just hear me okay, out. Okay. I'm trying to make sense. It's not about. No, you're making sense. I just yeah. may not agree with it. But you're right. Making, oh, we got to call her. Damn. Okay. Woo, okay. we y'all lighting we'll phones up. Well, I love it. Call her. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Right. I, I, I can agree. Let me jump in there too because I know we got to let Son wrap it up. We're coming in the last things. One of the things when we look at religion and it says to bind, um, and not just necessarily to bind us like that, but religion was started in the time of ancient people. It was a unifying factor that brought people together. It started to help civilize people. Right. If we as African people don't incorporate our religion, if our religion only serves a spiritual side, then we're always being failed. Every people who have a religion, their religion encompasses political, social, economic, right. education, 
Um, health. All, health, all of these things. That's why they come up with dietary plans, the way that their society is structured. We're the only people that get these religions, and we lose ourselves right. and start to emulate and assimilate other people. When I say this about religion, me being a religious person, I'm a Muslim, I make no bones about being a Muslim. But it is a motivational factor, something that helps to keep me disciplined, help me have morals and ethics, and to know what I should contribute to a society. But to govern other people by that, yes. I, that's one of the things that I don't advocate, right. is because you have so many different people make up. As right. a nationalist, we have to govern by what is most effective and best for an African right. people here in America. And can I know I, we, you know, running can out Can I add on to that? Uh, uh, let, me, yeah. let me just add on the and I'm going to let you have it, uh, Tiff. The re religion is the reason why Malcolm X left the nation of Islam. Religion is the reason why Khalid Mohammed left the nation of Islam. Right. Because black nationalism and religion cannot coexist because right. as a black nationalist, just like Brother Malcolm, just like Khalid, I'm going to speak on something. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the council should have the right to speak. That is right. a human natural right. right. Human religion is behavior modification right. based on your interpretation. Yes. You know, God told me to tell you to give $1,000 in my bank account. Like, how do you verify that? So you can't have nothing like that in a government which you cannot verify. Because with, 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 with government, you have to have changes, amendments. Like right now, right. we need a transparency in our government. When they talk about, oh, we need a grand jury to investigate it. Okay, we all want to look at it. You right. got, we got what? two minutes. Let me show you that. Check us out for the viewers out here listening. Check us out on the arena YouTube. All one word, the arena. 2013 yes. On YouTube, all one word, the arena. My bad, black folks. Oh, no, Tiffany, go ahead. Okay, no, what I was getting back to saying is, at the end of the day, as far as what I was saying about serving your purpose, so we all have a purpose, and we got to uh, come got to one those. last right, call, Right, we got to uh, come to those purpose. Okay, let's get this call. I'm, I'm going to let you close down, mm -hmm. Tiff. We're going to get it. That call going to take us. Call. Call you on. Um, yeah, uh, Shalom. Uh, Shalom. My name is uh, Brother Drake, and uh, just to, not to be the dead of horse, I understand what you all were saying, but... Uh, when we as Hebrews look at ourselves as a, as a way of life and a culture as opposed to the religious aspects, meaning the functions of it, then we, I deem it's uh, uh, for us to uh, find the, the abetterment for you know, all of us, whether we Muslim, Hebrew, Israelite, or disbeliever. And I think you know, it's true that when we deal with religion, this is what causes us to be in division. Shalom. 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 All right. Close out, Tiffany. Okay, like I said, uh, it's all about serving a purpose. So pretty much the whole idea of religion is supposed to elevate you and get you to the higher level of consciousness and not to enslave you or to oppress you or oppress other people. That's all I was trying to say. So no religion and government is what you're saying? What'd you say? No religion and government. Oh, uh, religion shouldn't be at, used as an act of government, but it's to get you to be enlightened to that higher consciousness of yourself. Well, let me, let me say That's this for what I'm record. saying. Right, I'm for individual... Religion. I mean, I'm a non-religious person, but right, I... Right, right. <laughs> but Yang, Yang is a Muslim. You know what I'm saying? But he doesn't try to impose it as a theocracy. He no, no, the don't impose it as a theocracy. Right. But what I'm saying is get yourself elevated, get yourself to a higher consciousness. Right. That's well, all I'm well, saying. Well, I, I will say this for the record. I will trust you, Gideon, once you become a black nationalist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't because trust me, period. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. Don't trust. That's right. right. Trust the most high. Don't trust the flesh. <laughs> I can't trust the most high. Right. After all these goddamn police meetings and goddamn right. slavery. You gotta start trusting yourself. Right. You gotta start trusting yourself. You gotta start trusting yourself. You gotta start trusting yourself. I say, no, you didn't say that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you then he said, like, Lord, we are Lord. Peace. <laughs> All right. All right. Great Woo, show. Great, great show. show. All right, Tim, we're going to have you back, huh?